Hello and welcome back to our series on control devices. In the last series, we learned about the fact that control devices are used to turn on or off the current flowing in an electrical circuit. Today, we're going to learn about a different control device. Our objectives for today's class are you'll be able to differentiate between a single pole and a double pole switch, identify the parts of a double pole switch, determine the plausible uses of a double pole switch, and give the color code for a double pole switch. Double pole switch. Hmm. Most of you would not be familiar with a double pole switch. It's lying somewhere around in your house. But as we go through this lesson, you'll get to know a bit more about the double pole switch. In the diagram to the left is the front view of the double pole switch. Noticeably, it has four terminals. To the right, we see the rear of the double pole switch. Noticeably, again, it has four terminals. Two terminals across from each other. They are the same color at the top, different colors at the bottom. Okay, we have to now get into the principle of operation of the double pole switch. What do we know about the double pole switch? Well, a switch that is used in a 240 volt circuit to control a load from one location is called a double pole switch. So again, a double pole switch is used on 240 volt circuits to control a load from one location. It is similar in construction to a single pole switch, but it has four terminal screws instead of two. Now, when you saw the, the rear view or the back view of the double pole switch, what you did not see is the words line and load. The two top screws are usually labeled line terminals and have the same color, while the, the bottom two screws are labeled load and are colored the same, but in a color that is different from the top two screw termination. In some double pole switches, however, all four terminals are in a brass color but when you're connecting them you have to be careful to respect the line and the load designation the line refers to the wires that are coming from the main circuit breaker that are supplying the switch and the load refers to the wires that are leaving the switch and are going to be attached to the device 240 volts requires two main hot wires. And in this case, each hot wire would be supplying a voltage of 120 volts. Combined, they would provide 240 volts. Now let's look at the parts of the double pole switch. As as was said previously, we must keep in mind the line side and the load side. And a key way to recognize the line side as well is that the grounding terminal is typically on the line side of the double pole switch. So if you cannot for some reason make out the word line on the back of the terminal, just look for which side of the switch top or bottom, you have the ground. If, we, if, that, if the ground is on the, the top or at the bottom, then that is the line section. The load section is the part that would now feed the device. So as said before, this double pole switch is similar to the single pole switch, only that it has four terminals. As we can see, parts are similar. The mounting ears is there, the mounting strap is there, 
we have a load terminal, we have the on or off designation, we have a line terminal, we have the toggle, we have the 6 to 32 mounting screw, there's also the grounding terminal, then you have the, the balancing line terminal, and to complete it all, we have the balancing load terminal. As you can see, both load terminals are across from each other. Both line terminals are across from each other. When connecting wires properly to this circuit, you connect line down, line down, load up, load up. Let me say it again. Line down, line down, load up, load up. Meaning, line down towards the breaker panel, load up towards the device. Again, line down towards the breaker panel, load up towards the device. There should be no crossing. A common mistake individuals make when connecting the circuit is that they would put both line wires on one side of the switch, both line load wires on the next side of the switch, which would cause conflict in the way the switch operates. Remember, this switch has a single a single location. It, 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 it is only con controlling this device from a single location. So though it has two contacts, these contacts only have a single flow, meaning both contacts need to be connected at the same time in order for power, power to flow. So in other words, in the off position here, the lever on this side is open as well as the lever on the opposite side is open. When the toggle is engaged into the on position, both levers will now be engaged into a contact position at the same time, which will cause current to flow. If you cross the wires, there is no way for the, the contact to be powered at the same time, hence, you will not be able to activate the switch and no current will flow to the circuit. So understand, it's a single throw switch that controls double contact. Double contact, but a single throw, meaning whatever direction your turn is in, on or off, two contacts are being engaged at the same time. Now let's look at some other important facts about the double pole switch. For example, how is it used? It is used as a, as a disconnecting means for a 240 volt electric water heater. Now the electric water heater can range in current values from 20 amperes to even 30, even 50 amperes, depending on its application and its size. So if you want to have a disconnecting means by which you are able to control this, this um, water heater from the, from the location of the water heater and don't have to worry about going to a breaker panel to disconnect this, you can use a double pole switch. Most popular applications for, for um, control of water heater in these days are usually time of circuit. But if you are still into connecting manually, the double pole switch is ideal. So it works like a single pole switch, except that there are two sets of internal contacts that I spoke to, about, to you about just before um, that are connected in such a way that when the toggle is in the on position, both sets of contacts are closed. When the toggle is in the off position, both sets of contacts are open. So here we have a practical look at how this double pole switch 
is used to control this water heater. And I give credit to Mr. Haynes for, for creating this diagram. However, I had to make a slight adjustment to apply it to our color code because we use the Canadian color code. And many times when you look on the internet, you will see diagrams that have the American wire, wire, wire and code. And so you'll, you'll find out the differences in the wiring. So I had to make a few adjustments to it. Um, so here we have our double pole switch. And we have, as we can see, this would be our source wire coming from the breaker. And it now enters into this switch at the top. So these, these would be the line terminals. And these two here, as we trace them through this cable, would be the load terminals. And all of them are black. And we will connect them to the main wires on the water heater, which would be so simple for us to do. So this 240 volt water heater would have two terminals. In some cases, you will get one red wire, one black wire, or you would get two black wires. Um, based on the color coding of the water heater, as well as the ground, which is either bare or it would be green. So the major thing to understand is a 240 volt circuit requires two hot wires, which means when you're controlling this from the circuit breaker panel, you need a double pole breaker, which will actually control the voltage or the current on each of these hot lines. All right, so for a 240 volt circuit, you need a double pole breaker. And the double pole switch will now be used to control this water heater. So you turn it off when it's out of use for a while. You turn it on when you want it to be Use. All right, so it works as a disconnecting unit. And that brings us to the end of our discussion on double pole switches. It's time to recap. Let's see what we have learned. A double pole switch is similar in construction to the single pole switch, but it has twice as many terminals. A double pole switch is used to control circuits that have a voltage of 240 volts. When connecting a double pole switch, reference must be made with respect to line or load side terminals, because as we say, this switch has a single throw, but two contacts are being um, operated at the same time. So if you, do, if you have any crossing between line and load, the switch will not work properly. Double pole switches are used in lighting circuits for those large lights that require 240 volts, as well as a disconnecting means for an electric water heater. There you have it. Now we know a little bit more about double pole switches as we continue our series on control devices.